great history this competition has. The 60th final today, all chasing that. The team that won it first against the team that won it last. They're ready. Tom Heaton, how does your villa do it? I think we got on the front foot. You know, I want to see the lads uh, go and take the game on. Uh, you know, not be sort of fearful, not be hesitant of, uh, of City. As I say, go and get on the front foot, lay a glove on them, be brave with the ball and, uh, and see what can happen. Michael, if City don't do it, what will it be because of? Just down to probably defensive issues, not knowing a uh, centre-back pairing. The first time this City back four have ever played together. That, and that's, and that's, you know, that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's difficult to, to, to build a foundation when you keep chopping and changing, but at the end of the day, uh, lads need minutes and it's a good opportunity to, to showcase why they should be starting. Jamie, how does it go? We've spoken a lot about the, the, the attacking players, obviously, no De Bruyne and Jack Grealish, but I think Tyro Mings, you can see in your picture there, is so important today. I think if Aston Villa do get a win, or a result. They've got to make sure that they defend properly. They've considered too many goals, you know, nine goals against Man City this season already. He has to have the game of his life. And not many before the teams came out, gave Villa a chance. Some are giving them a slight one, but can they cause one of the biggest upsets this competition has seen in its final? Your commentary team, Gary Neville and Martin Tyler. Thanks, Scott. Afternoon, everybody. It's a beautiful afternoon here in Northwest London. Aston Villa. Here at the stadium for a third season in a row. They secured their return to the Premier League by the playoffs back in May. The Manchester City have turned the National Stadium into the Etihad of the South, regularly sending silverware from this part of Northwest London to their part of Northwest England. Their ninth game here in two years, they have won all of the previous eight. As always, the Football League stage this occasion with a real feel for the fans and indeed for the sponsors as well. The executives of the Carabao Group will meet the two teams. Contrasting build-ups. Manchester City have been at the Bernabeu. Aston Villa have been at Bodymore Heath, their training base. But they might argue more time to concentrate on the details of today. Well, they're captained by a fan, Jack Grealish. They're managed by a fan, Dean Smith. And their own supporters are here in droves. I arrived around 11 o'clock this morning. The Villa fans were enjoying the day. For Manchester City, maybe just another day out. But we'll see how the team performs. Whether familiarity might be an enemy. It's a picture. who form classical reflection Naomi and Hannah who will sing and lead us in the national anthem anniversary, the diamond anniversary, which of these sides will sparkle here at Wembley? Let's give you the lineups. And Dean Smith has been 
at previous Villa League Cup finals as a supporter. Now he picks the team for this one. He had already decided for last weekend to punt for Oyen Leland in goal ahead of the recently arrived but much more experienced Pepe Reina. He also chooses to return to a back four for only the second time in 2020. Bjorn Engels alongside Tyrone Mings in the centre of that defence. Former Manchester City youngster Douglas Luiz is in a midfield which sees Jack Grealish in a narrower role. Tanzanian striker Ali Samata plays only his fifth game for the club. Anwar El Ghazi scored here at Wembley in the playoff final last May. Pepe Reina, who won this competition with Liverpool eight years ago, now is on the bench. Danny Drinkwater is not eligible. The Pep Guardiola goalkeeping in this competition has been entrusted to Claudio Bravo. He's true to his man again. John Stones makes only his fourth start in 19 games, and the bad luck which has docked Imeric Laporte this season struck again in Madrid, so Fernandinho is needed at the back. He's looking for a fifth winner's medal, as is David Silva, this part of what is a farewell tour for the Spaniard. Also seeking number five, Sergio Aguero, supported by 19-year-old Phil Foden, and Raheem Sterling, who made a major impact as a substitute on Wednesday, proving his readiness to start today. All seven substitutes did begin the Champions League tie against Real Madrid in midweek. So for the Carabao Cup, it's Aston Villa against Manchester City, and it's live! Well, February's gone, so we get some sunshine. And uh, the 1st of March is the date. Actually, Villa have played in a League Cup final before on this date. So we'll be hoping it's a happy anniversary for that. Well, Gary, what's, what's your feeling? You've been uh, over uh, around the managers, around the players. I think Aston Villa seem really relaxed. I think if you're an Aston Villa fan, Aston Villa player, coach, you just want them to get through this first 20 minutes. If you City, you just want to demonstrate your authority. They've obviously got a very experienced team who've been here before and know how to do this. But like I think you mentioned the event and the occasion. It's really wonderful here. The atmosphere is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. And that's a big day for everyone involved, including the officials. Lee Mason is the referee. We do have VAR. A Villa win guarantees a European spot. Only so for City, if of course they overturn their recent UEFA ban. Aston Villa have won something, the right to play in their home colours. And they get the 2020 Carabao Cup final underway. Strewn, error prone. A couple of them, Wesley Conser and Courtney Hawes, have lost their places today. Target to cross on the run. Not safely away from Manchester City. The ones in the studio mentioned the areas where Manchester City may. Have a vulnerability. I think obviously the back four is something to point at Fernandino and Stones, but also City don't have the penetration that they ordinarily would have. I think Foden playing off the right, Aguero obviously isn't as quick as Jesus, so maybe they can just be a little bit more aggressive in pushing up the pitch as well. Your angles knocks it long, given another chance. He was the player you might recall who made that awful mistake in uh, the last few seconds of the game against Tottenham, which cost them. That match. That's going to play. And Hamadi working the right hand side ahead of the right back. Gilbert is going to take the throw here. He's hoping for a longish one. He needs a bit of defending. And it leads to an early Aston Villa corner.
big, big height advantage for Aston Villa. You think about opportunities. Corners, free kicks. Definitely one of them. Yeah, they've been doing plenty of planning. Tyrone Mings behind the mask, so to speak. And putting it on Claudio Bravo, who uh, answers the question. Trying to push out. Diagonally back from Kilbert, looking for Samata. Comes to Mohamedi. And coming in was El Ghazi. It was a chance, he couldn't keep the header down. Encouragement, Gary, for Aston Villa. Really good start to the game by Aston Villa. Fernandino doesn't clear his lines, then he just picks out El Ghazi. He's in a great position. You're thinking, is it too high? No, it's not. He's got to head it down. It's a big chance. It's one of his skills. He comes in from the outside into inner scoring positions, and his manager knows that could have really got Villa off to a fly. We all remember an FA Cup final last season when Watford had an early chance, didn't take it, and paid a very heavy price. thinking when you're the underdog playing against a team like City, how many chances like that are you going to get in a game? One or two a half, ordinarily, at most. Stones. Aguero had drifted left. Nice to City get their first goal. scored nine goals in seven appearances against Aston Villa, including a hat-trick in that recent meeting, the 6-1 at Villa Park just a few weeks ago. Well, we saw the total marking at one end, we now see man-to-man -man marking at the other. Bunched together, those players. And the first test for Milan, the Norwegian goalkeeper. Finland had taken the corner, couldn't keep it in. for Pep Guardiola, an excellent uh, result and performance as well in the Bernabeu with a, an approach similar to the one that he took to Old Trafford in the semi-final of this very competition earlier this year. Yeah, really good in the week, Manchester City. That is a tough place to play football and to go and win. Take some doing. Made by Rodri. Mings gets their first for Villa. Made by Fernandinho. The early signs are of Aston Villa. You wondered before the game whether they would really drop deep in the game and allow City to dominate, but they are pushing up in this first five minutes. Maybe that good start's giving them some encouragement. Samata so laid it off. Douglas Luis, who couldn't get a visa to play for Manchester City, though he belonged to them for a while. Villa solved that problem. He's uh, gone on to so get involved in the move again. Brazilian. Oh, he was looking to get in at the back post and Ali Samata as well. Actually, the roles were reversed. It was the wide man who was in the middle and he's still there. He's going towards the near post here and it's cleared by Fernandinho. That's three really good crosses put into the box from Villa in wide areas. And a little bit of joy. Kyle Walker, not like him. There's a little bit of space behind him. And of course, it's one of the few who did start the game against Real Madrid. Pep Guardiola's really run the changes. Dean Smith certainly, the Saturday before last, spelt it out to his fellow players through the media, actually. But, yeah, some have plugged their way out of the cup final team. Manchester City usually so aggressive in wide areas, you're stopping the crosses coming into the box, they're going to have to do better. Zinchenko, Fernandino and Stones, not the best in the air. Well, Norwich on Friday, Watford on Saturday. They were results, of course, that Villa hated in terms of staying in the Premier League, but they were certainly big upsets, couldn't it be three in a row in this League Cup final? 
is uh, plenty of height. Is the target. Is that target. The idea for Grealish to play a little bit narrow is to get him into the game. He's out in his more familiar wide left position, certainly the position he's been playing most of this season in the league. A good vantage point by Lee Mason. So good from Foden. Zinchenko. It's another city corner. Good open field for the final. Maybe a bit more open than Aston yeah. Villa might want, but Phil Foden, perhaps the surprise pick. I don't know. He's certainly got the ability to play from the start in a cup final. Well, it was a good first moment in the game for him in an attacking sense. He was getting whacked and he just rolled the challenges. Short corner. again to tease it towards the far post and Mings has to head it for Michael Warner. The knockback was threatening. Mings did well, it's easy to switch off. Roger just wins it at the back post and puts it into a really good area with David Silva lurking. Right, Martin, it has got a good feel to it, the game. Well, they short with the last one, they can go short again here if they choose to do so, but then... Uh... Manchester City. It's too deep. Retrieved by Zinchenko. Sterling. Rodri. And keeps it going. And it's just in the end looped over. Stones and Aguero both going for it. Gazi had the chance at one end, which was a really good chance. This one's more difficult for Aguero, it's behind him. He's having to go and fetch it. There is pace on the ball, which helps him a little bit. Certainly a more difficult chance. to put some of their patterns on proceedings here. Walker. Zinchenko. David Silva and Aguero. Many time winners of this competition. City remember looking for their fifth success in the League Cup, the Carabao Cup, in the last seven campaigns and three in a row will be if they win here. Body over the side there, thinking this is more like it. He does like a left footer playing on the right hand side, doesn't he? Riyad Mahrez, Bernardo Silva, and so Phil Foden. Yeah, I think that was one of the things when Sane and Sterling were playing, and Sane played on this side and Sterling on the other. He sometimes left Sane out, and you were wondering why, but I think it was to get Sterling on this side and getting a left footer on that right. Variations, but that's one of the consistent as is Kyle Walker getting well up the pitch. Fernandinho, this is what Villa have been rehearsing. A low defensive block. Trying to make sure there are no spaces for the patterns to be worked, triangles to be constructed, and danger to be created. City are in shape now, their attacking shape, which is the one they expect to be in for most of the game. And Villa are in their defensive shape. Yeah. Rodri, Gundogan and Zinchenko just organising that block with Stones and Fernandino behind. You just watch them now, Gundogan there, Rodri, I think Zinchenko may just start to tuck in if it moves over to that right side. Fernandino, 
nicely led off by Sterling. David Silva staying on his feet, a double ricochet, and Lee Mason says goal kick. Well, we'll miss him when he's gone. He's been such an artist in English football for a decade. Yeah, players like David Silva are a rare breed where they're just universally respected by every player, every fan, everybody in the media. No one dislikes David Silva, everybody loves him. And he stands up and gets counted in every respect except taking penalties. He's only taken one in uh, regulation time and missed it a long time ago now. They've got to find a penalty taker today. Should a chance on their way from the spot. And De Bruyne who stepped up and scored. Wednesday only amongst the substitutes. That's Guerrero. Guerrero probably gets hands on the ball again. <laughs> He's allowed a few misses. Here's El Mohamed. He's played it Wembley before with Hull City, you might recall. Engels. Probably he signed a new one year extension. He could play at the back probably for another five. About Laporte going off in that game in the Bernabeu and him coming on, you wondered whether that would be a real problem for them, but he did well. Here's Aguero, Everton just waiting to stay on side. Sport comes from very deep from Rodri. Yeah, I think that's where Bernardo Silva and Mahrez have the edge unfolding in those types of areas when they're dribbling into the box. Not through any fault of his own, probably prefer to play a little deeper. Scored two of the six for the park. Sinchenko. Aguero. Challenged by Douglas Luiz. Always nice uh, and spicy when a Brazilian challenges a player from Argentina. I think you're right, the game's settled this last five minutes and Villa have gone a lot deeper, but I think it's really important that they try and have those three or four minute periods where they are a little more aggressive and push up the pitch to give those defenders. John Terry there with uh, Richard O'Kelly and the coaching staff as well. John Terry won this competition three times, twice man of the match. Chelsea, of course. Stokes. Well, it's a big couple of months ahead for him. Okay. to trim his England squad. Good showing today would help. Yeah. He's just at a point, John Stones, in his career where he has to establish himself. At the moment, he's a defender where people think he gives you a chance. He's got to get that away from his game where he builds a level of consistency, plays without errors. Demonstrates concentration and focus, which can get him to the very top. He wanted to take the throw himself, Pep Guardiola. Well, you're right, Gary, this is the, the shape of the game to come, unless, of course, we get something that will break the pattern. Throw every minute they yeah. but the past 15 minutes now, yeah. and that, that would be the first target for Dean Smith and his yeah. parrot and blue players. It's how much time they spend in that 4 5 1 versus the 4 3 3, yeah. and can they get the two wide players closer to Samata, like they did during that first few minutes of the game when it was interesting? And you thought, oh, City going to have problems, but if they start to go back, those wide two players and get pushed nearer to the full backs, it'll become a long old day. by Gilbert. You know, the raft of new players brought in for this season after promotion. Of course, fighting to stay in the Premier League is what's going to happen to Aston Villa, win or lose today. Look where El Mohamed is now. Really deep on this right-hand side. Grealish trying to break out there. Fernandinho. Sterling waiting on the left. 
Aguero through the middle. Plenty of uh, ease of movement for the Manchester City fullbacks. And of course, for Sterling, who loves playing here, a fantastic record at City and with England. And by Zinchenko, Milan's ball. certainly has settled into a pattern one that he'll be more comfortable with he's emphasizing yesterday the, the hunger that Manchester City feel for this sometimes he's spoken out against the competition for fixture congestions really but it's a simple truth if you win football matches you play more games uh, yeah what do you want to do not win the football matches <laughs> Well, particularly if you're Pet, the games, yeah. <laughs> particularly if you're Pep Guardiola, you've been at Barcelona and you've won the league three times, you've won Champions League, Copa del Rey, you want to be in these competitions. And he's benefited from this final over the last few years. My line from City, no surprise in that. Nearly dropped to El Ghazi. Ming's on the way back. Making sure that Aguero didn't get out. Who will have England hopes for the European Championship in the summer? Tyrone Mings. Stokes. City start again. A slow tempo. At least it's not running the legs, passing the legs out of Aston Villa on this uh, notoriously sapping and large surface. Yeah, I think if you sit it, we'll try and get the ball over to Raheem Sterling on this side because David Silva's taken a really good position that's causing Gilbert a problem. He's having to tuck in, Aguero's doing it now, and then he's got some space, Sterling. Here he is, moving out to get that space, but running into traffic. Rodri, going around the back, Aguero! Inside 20 minutes, patience pays off. Yeah, patience aligned with quality. You just saw it developing with Raheem Sterling over this side. Plays back in, and Rodri, it's the timing of the run from Foden. Really clever. Just watch him on this right hand side, Phil Foden. He just holds his run. And he just loses. Target in that left target in that left back position, and then you just think about Aguero. Can he finish? A little bit of good fortune with the deflection of Mings, but you thought there was an error of inevitability about it when it fell to him, and it happened. Yeah, it was the bounce that beat the goalkeeper, and it went down off the calf of Tyrone Mings. But Aguero has landed another one on another big day. Pep can punch the air. And Sergio can celebrate, but Phil Foden with the assist. That's a justification for his inclusion. Well, he was clever, Foden. Timing of his run was perfect. Delivery from Rodri, equally so. So even when you sit deep, even when you park players across the pitch, they can find a way, Manchester City. And Dean Smith now to ponder his next move. Well, it's the most horrible team to be 1-0 down to. He's right, you've you. got to get the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a free kick here. And, uh, Zimbabwean. Nakamba. David Silva checking for an elbow, but it wasn't that. When I say things can change, of course, the sending off can change the dynamics of the match. But Manchester City in domestic cups have been so dominant. Yes, they've fallen behind in the Premier League. And they're still probably being chastised for not doing better in Europe. But they've got a good chance at least this season. Mm -hmm. He 
these occasions, particularly for this trophy. They've been uh, masterful. Trinchenko. Double figures against Aston Villa. Jack Grealish trying to impose himself on the game, and if Villa can bring him into proceedings, it's going to be one goal down. Oh, he's nowhere near lost yet. Douglas Lewis. on the ball, just settles everybody down in the Villa shirt. Just gives them real composure, his touch there again, fantastic. And the pass to so Ogazi, had that early chance and goes for goal here, and it just passes in front of Claudio Bravo. He's had a few downs as well as his ups as a Manchester City goalkeeper, and certainly worth testing out on these occasions. Yeah, good little bit of play for Villa. It's one of the areas that Villa would look at. I think he's not as strong as Edison. Edison played in the final last season. That's his only game ever in the in this competition, and that was because Claudio Bravo wasn't fit. Fernandinho. Aston Villa nil. Manchester City won halfway through the first half. He's got a real problem with where Aguero is because he's got Sterling outside him. They do use the width of the pitch so well, yeah. say. And as you were saying that, Phil Foden was right getting chalk on his boots on the other side. Yeah. Fernandinho. It's a nightmare for the right back. He's got a mark inside, that's where the danger is. But it's a big danger having Raheem Sterling in 20 yards of space in front of him. Got the top scorers against the leakiest defence, and they've leaked already. Despite the change, a lot of teams in the end do go back to a back four when the things are going wrong. And they certainly were going wrong individually and collectively in recent league games for Villa. Look at that front three for Villa now. That's where really they would like to be. The danger is that they get passed around and then they're all running back like that. And Grealish was pushing up to try and engage as a fourth attacker. But it is. They don't really have to take the risks at this stage. No. That sounds negative, but staying in it, staying in the game, yeah. Is of Dean Smith's philosophy here. In terms of defending properly, it's going to switch a play up to Foden that's undone them once already. And maybe twice. That is the real problem against the best teams. Every coach in the land will say you want your back four to be compact and narrow, but if you've got two players that are outside you and you've got the quality of midfield player or fullback, as it were, with Zinchenko this time, being able to switch play, You've got a massive issue. It was a great touch as well, wasn't yeah. it? Proper young talent. Local hero for Manchester City fans from nearby Stockport. And that's where the back five may have helped Aston Villa to have more defenders to cover the width. The way Samata, who's been struggling to get touches in the other half of the pitch. Training ground this week for Villa has been when the ball moves, we move. And been shuttling across. It seems easy. It's been drilled into the team, but against top class craftsmen. Sterling decides to have a crack. He's been short of goals recently. 
by his standards, by his recent standards anyway. Corner for Manchester City. It's headed in cheaply by Rodri. So the corner that shouldn't have been has led to a second goal at Villa. Well, it was a soft sense of their defending. But that's a tough one for the team from the West Midlands to take. But look at the space Rodri has. That's Gilbert that's marking him. There will be controversy. We still got to defend the ball into the box. It's a great header from Rodri. Gets across Gilbert, gets higher than him, and heads it down with great power. He's past the goalkeeper before he can react. But this is the controversial moment. Then back off Gundogan and shouldn't have been a Manchester City corner. Those are the things that VAR <laughs> will be questioned, but it's not in their remit. And Dean Smith rules the ill luck, but the truth is, you've still got the corner to defend, even when it's a wrong decision, and they didn't defend it. And he's uh, coming on to the fourth official, David Cook, with justifiable angst, but the damage is done, and sometimes the second goal is the harder one to get. When Manchester City get it, they very rarely squander a position like this. Well, I can understand Dean Smith being annoyed with the officials, but I'm sure he'll be even more annoyed with his team. You can play against this Manchester City team and you can see goals like the first one where there's really good combinations and fantastic play, but to concede against what in essence is a team that have smallest players on a corner kick is difficult to stomach for a coaching team, I would imagine. John Terry will be sat there on the bench. Someone who was great in aerial duels. And you won't believe that this Aston Villa team could concede such a simple goal. They 
do. We've seen simple goals time and time again. They're poor defensively. Well, things that Villa needed to do better today. First of all, we was to defend better, but also, you're going to beat a favourite team in a cup final. You need a bit of luck to go your way as well. Just over half an hour gone, Manchester City very much in the box seat at Wembley. The, the one bit of sympathy you would have for the assistant referee on that side is that he couldn't see through Gundahan, he probably didn't have the best view of it, but... Aston Villa won't take any consolation from that. There's the switch of play again. And so often the crucial moment, the deciding moment, when one nil becomes two nil. Yeah. But sometimes you see real wicked delivery from corner kicks, and you think it's perfect. This was, I wouldn't say it was a floated in corner kick, but it was just put into an area. Nothing special. Rodri, who recently scored with a header in the uh, rearranged game against West Ham United at the Etihad. More of a near post flick on then. Ended up in the back of the West Ham net. He's almost a defensive member of the midfield trio. He's chipping in from set pieces as well. First season from Atletico Madrid, who incidentally were very helpful to Manchester City over the past week with training facilities, both before and after the game. They stayed in Spain on the uh, Wednesday night, trained the uh, Atletico complex. And they've arrived back here, you know, plenty of changes in personnel uh, on the trip, uh, full of vigour. Carabao Cup for a third season in a row already. Gundogan. It's an amazing ball. Foden, Aguero coming in. Sterling lines it up. That's the handball. The arms were down by the side of Tyrone Mings. Well, the switch of players destroying Aston Villa. Whether it be to fullback or whether it be to the wide player. First goal, it happened. Here's another one. Folding again, the timing of the run's fantastic. His touch this time lets him down a little bit, but eventually it falls to Sterling. The word calls for handball. It's a proper block, actually, by Tyrone Mins there. An arm right down by the side. We get that one, but it's a corner. Get pulled out again here. Zinchenko. So uh, the Villa fans having to endure this behind the goal that City are attacking with such gusto and so effectively. Ten minutes to go to half time. And it's been one way traffic for 20 minutes. Other than that first five or ten minutes where Villa had a little bit of interest. You see there the attempts are now starting to mirror the game. Corner again from this side. Kyle Walker to have a crack. Final for Tottenham. He lost to Chelsea. Moved to Manchester City is certainly getting some more trophies in his cabinet. Angles. Douglas Lewis. Target. Again, it was actually in the Fulham team that knocked Aston Villa out in that playoff final a couple of years ago. Zinchenko. And it's the whip that's really hurting 
Aston Villa, such quality from it. Sterling in the centre, down he goes. No complaints. Zinchenko queuing up at the far post. Walker. Zinchenko. Silver. Sterling again. Well, uh, imprisoned on the edge of their own penalty area. And the back four can't cover the width of the pitch. He may have to go to a back five, Dean Smith, in the second half and revert. Because the two full backs are trying to get in and out quickly enough to protect the centre backs and then get out to the wide areas, but they're getting done and destroyed on that switch of play. Back four there now, they're in good positions, but having to work hard, those full-backs of Aston Villa. David Silva wins a header over Gilbert. I feel for them, having been in that position myself in various games over the years. Your legs start to go after a bit, you've just been worked and worked and worked. Gilbert doesn't know what to do now, he's just standing in his position. By Engels, he's doing something similar. From Mohamed, who is uh, to all extents a box, is a right back, really. And he could go to right wing back if they brought on another central defender. Uh, even the Regal Villa fans, it's a tough watch. He's just got to get his team to half time without conceding another goal. It's the best he can hope for. 3-0 would be devastated. Uh, it took Watford a long time to recover from the 6-0 in the FA Cup. Javi Gracia actually was the manager then. He wasn't manager for very long when this season started. And one of the reasons, I think, he lost a bit of his mojo was the, the real pain you want to get to a cup final, but you don't want people to be telling you you've been beaten by record margins. We did have a 5-0 here in the League Cup. Swansea played Bradford City seven years ago. Ingles. Here's Mings. Stumble by Stones. In by El Ghazi and Samata Ooh. has powered Aston Villa back into the contest. A John Stone slip. A quick cross and a super header. Well, it's not the best they could hold for because John Stones makes a right mess of this. And I said he's at a crossroads in his career where he's got to stop making mistakes. But he's made a big one. And this let Aston Villa back in this cup final and Pep Guardiola sat down over there, stormed to his bench. The quality's magnificent on the cross. And Samata, he's had one chance with his head. He's not missed the second. That's his game. He's excellent in the air. And that's a perfect example of it. And Villa are alive again in the Carabao Cup final. With a little bit of help from Manchester City and John Stones in particular. Just a bit. It was a simple ball down that channel. His concentration defines the top defenders, the top football players, and Pep Guardiola puffs his cheeks. He can't believe that his team have let Aston Villa back in this game. Suddenly, the fans to our left have found their voices. Zinchenko. Walker. There's a huge 
stage three or four minutes here before half time. And Villa have been given a lifeline. With John Stones is sat there wondering why Fernandino plays before him, why Otamendi plays before him. Why is Ali starting his fourth game in 19, John Stones? That's why. Just simple errors, lack of concentration. He's a really big potential, big talent, but, but, he's got to get rid of those errors. Gilbert has had a trying first half, heading round. Andy Silva probes away. Rodri. Walker. Now Zinchenko. Slide it in first time. It's behind Sterling. Collected by Rodri. Walker. It's the City trying to get back into the groove straight away. Well, it's not his favourite position, Phil Foden, but he's played it really well in this first half. The big thing that's impressed me has been his patience in holding his position out there. He's not chased the game, like sometimes young players do when they're not getting on the ball all the time. He's shown great composure. Interception by Douglas Luiz. It's been hard enough for Villa players to do that. And read the direction of the passes. And now he wants to be the help when there isn't anything. Or anyone, rather. Finally, Engels gets across. Uh, Douglas Luiz wanted to play it. And comes Fernandinho with a... Launching header. That was Luis again. And he gets the foul on Raheem Sterling. Well, this is the goal again. Villa just working the position, chips it up in the air. I have no idea what happens. I was looking for a slip, but there isn't. But the quality is great from Villa once he does make that mistake. Yeah, El Ghazi with a fantastic yeah. first time cross to feed the strength of the new arrival from Tanzania. A Tanzanian scores in a major cup final in England. That will be absolutely greeted in his homeland with joy and celebration. He's just a hero for being here, mm. and now he's done this. Well, we said one or two chances per half, didn't we? Good chances for Villa. He's taken one of them. I still think that Dean Smith at half time will consider whether he will go to a back five or not, just to give a bit more protection over the width of the pitch. His full backs have suffered in this first half. Looked as though it was going to be a procession. Oh. And it's football, it can change in a flash. I just kept thinking that if City get another one before half time, it's game over, 3 0, and Villa are done. Didn't think had too much of a chance. Nothing was happening at that end of the pitch. There's Villa fans behind that goal now to our left. They've had to watch so much of the Manchester City attacking in this first half. A buoyance again. Well, John Stone's slip has altered the complexion of the first half of this Carabao Cup final. Ali Samata was the beneficiary of it from a wonderful cross. Manuel El Ghazi came close with an early header at 0 0. And then Sergio Aguero put City in front. And when Rodri added the second, it looked a formality. It's anything but now. Villa 1, City 2 at the break. That's an amazing Aston Villa life for Dean Smith. He was here, well, the old Wembley, actually, when he was still only five, and he saw Villa play Everton in a League Cup final. Now he's managing Villa against Manchester City. Exactly the same event. They went on, they needed three games, actually, to win that one back in 1977. Today, of course, it has to be settled. This pitch takes penalties as it did last season for Manchester City to win and in 2020 
2016 when they beat Liverpool from the penalty shootout. Aguero. And Sterling is away. Ooh. The referee is pulled it back. Well, Gilbert was left on the ground. Lee Mason spotted the foul by Sterling on him. It's sharp. Not too much in it from that angle, I have to say. Just looking for changes, obviously City haven't changed. Just looking at Jack Grealish's position, he did press on to Fernandino at the start of that second half. I wonder whether he's going to play a little bit further forward to try and pressurise City higher up the pitch. He's just dropped in there. You see him now moving forward onto Rodri. It's his instincts to do that. Yeah, just going with him though, I think he wasn't doing that in the first half. They're going a bit higher, a bit further. Been fearing the worst. 2 0. Stones slip, which they took full advantage of mm. to get the quality that followed across and the header. Jamie Renner had a really good point. It does seem that every mistake John Stones makes is in front of the cameras, the global audience, yeah. and it leads to a goal. Gilbert just into an area to uh, try and get Villa up the pitch, but it's not easy. Even if they do adopt a higher press, it just suits City to pass their way around them. The switch of play to Foden oh. made it really difficult for Matt Target and then while Al Ghazi is trying to help out, Foden goes past both of them. This is like it was a speculative shot, really. into that as Jack Grealish was front on to him and planted the handball but didn't make a fuss when it wasn't given. That was my big fear for Villa in the first half. As the full backs you see um, Hamadi on that right hand side getting pulled back. How will the full backs cope with the switch of play? You watch Folding just down here beneath us holding his position out on this side. Sterling over there now. Pitch is so big. And it comes again. The defenders for the little twin thrown up on the, the goal. Grealish goes down with a sense of purpose that, that Guardiola would have pressed into his players. Do not let Grealish start to dominate the match, which he's capable of doing. Talk about Grealish pushing on Rodri. Rodri's <laughs> pretty close to Grealish, isn't he? When uh, needed to defend. He's such a talisman. Neenham was the goalkeeper who conceded six to City in the Premier League game at Villa Park recently. He played very well in the two legs of the semi-final, the second leg, where they snatched it right at the last and they've knocked out Leicester, remember? Also knocked out Liverpool, which has a bit of an asterisk around it because the, uh, the Liverpool's first team were out of the country at the time. Nicely taken in return by David Silva, Zinchenko. Here's a wasted cross from the Manchester City left-back, Ukrainian. It was all going very swimmingly for yeah. Pep Guardiola. Not so now. And he's not going to change anything because of that goal just before half time. So if it just alters the thinking, and the mentality of Aston Villa more than anything, really. City are experienced enough to come through moments like that. But Villa, it gives them real hope. The unfortunate Almeric Laporte missed most of the season. A very steady and controlled comeback. The fear of him getting injuries for protecting the original problem. And of course, that all unfolded very badly for the defender. 
in Madrid on Wednesday, so he's here till the day, but only uh, a watching brief. He'll be out for three or four weeks. Again, good advantage played by referee Mason. Fighting in challenges, the likes of Nakamba giving you know, a bit of encouragement. The switch a play of their own. Douglas Luiz. in the air, he's picked up. As uh, Villa push players forward, this is what they be concerned about. And the free kick is given. As Aguero went down. Well, it was promising. Folden was fouled, I think, before he played it, just there. by Mings, maybe three fouls. But City were still going, so the referee was entitled to leave it as late as he could, and then Aguero has won this free kick, which all of his ambition to claw it back to 2-2. They have to make sure they don't concede a third. hit by Foden, but it nearly found its way in. It was a weak header from Mings. Yeah, it was. Don't head it back in towards the edge of your own 18-yard box. Just concentrating so hard on keeping it down, Foden. Hits it into the ground. He kept, kept it down too far. Yeah. And it bobbled wide. It's aimed at El Ghazi. Quite a catalogue of goalkeeping stories this season, Aston Villa. Tom Heaton, delighted to have him in the studio. He's always a very companionable man. And I'm sure you're all enjoying his comments. Pepe Reina isn't 100% fit. He wasn't 100% fit when he played against uh, Southampton in an eventful game for his last game before this one. A week ago yesterday. Great character, a bit different goalkeepers, aren't they? From the rank and file of the outfield men, just a bit. <laughs> Sterling, the important thing for Aston Villa is not to let large portions of the game go by where it looks like they can't get a challenge in on City, which is what happened. And probably about 10 minutes into, maybe 40 minutes in that first half, they have to get closer to City just to keep the crowd interested. And those Villa fans, the ball was really penned into this half for the last part of that first half, and they have to try and stop that. And that's maybe why they're trying to press higher up the pitch. That's his challenge. Yeah, sure. Look, game over, and then suddenly it was game on. Was Douglas Luis driving the pitch. It's difficult to get controlled possession in these circumstances without leaving gaps like this. That's the risk. Switch to Foden again, touch in towards Aguero. Gundogan was hoping he might have been teed up. By the youngster. It's a brilliant header from Fernandino, it really is. He towers above Grealish. What a leap. Just leaves one on him on the way through as well. One of the three players looking for a fifth League Cup winner's medal. Manchester City today, along with David Silva and Sergio Aguero. It's a 
extraordinary, isn't it? Ian Rush did it for Liverpool. Remember, they won it four seasons in a row. Back in the uh, 1980s. Oh, he snapped. He snapped. Gilbert looks like he's just forced the ball into Sterling's chest. Lee Mason's looking right at it. That's an aggressive gesture. It should be a booking. Yeah. And uh, Ian Sterling not accepting the uh, handshake of apology. They're not supposed to be shaking hands these days anyway. The uh, mm. health problems around the world. First time. I think he's got every right to be annoyed, Raheem Sterling. It's not violent conduct. No. It's, it's not really serious foul play either, but it is a foul. And had already made one mistake, been punished for it, and you get a player sent off in these circumstances. So Pep Guardiola needs a uh, Cool ahead from Raheem Sterling. And he might need some reinforcements. Remember, he's got a, a celebrity seven on the bench. One of whom's getting ready to come on, a certain Kevin De Bruyne. Rodrigo Aguero's offside. Getting a bit fractious now. It is, the game's getting quicker and there's more space and Villa are being a little bit more proactive in trying to push up the pitch and with that comes some risk, but I think it's one worth taking because we've got Kevin De Bruyne coming on. For Gundogan. The latest Manchester City penalty taker. Gundogan's one of those who's failed. And had a, a wretched time from the spot. They probably won't want it to go to penalties here. Is on the second penalty for City in regulation time. He's missed the first, and he scored past his fellow countryman, Thibaut Courtois. Well, you mentioned the bench. Mm -hmm. Guardiola's got reinforcements on there, are plenty. He was just sensational in the burn about Kevin De Bruyne. Sensational pretty much every week, to he be is. fair. On the back of a very poor season last season because of injury. Yeah. And he's re-emerged even better than before. And it's just wonderful to watch him. He's had to do it, really, in a City side not as good as they were last season. Here's Sterling, a pace, and that was a pretty desperate challenge by Angus, but he made it. David Silva. Cross from De Bruyne. Times. Holding again. They had the first shot blocked. They get one away this time. Back to Walker. Oh, Roy, not quite attuned to the pace of things yet. Douglas um, Lewis gets away. He was getting away. Rodri, whether well, by accident or design, a tactical foul. Yeah, it was. Too wonderful from Kevin De Bruyne. Rodri just thinks there's more danger than there is and just thinks, well, I'll take the yellow card. Oh, does it? The way by Stanks, headed back by Target. Now gone. And Villa. In the fight, they haven't had very much of the ball. The ball wasn't the best ball, and Zinchenko had to do a bit of retrieving. Well, you'd think one of Pep Guardiola's next moves, if they don't get a third goal, would be to 
get Bernardo Silva or Mahrez out on this right-hand side. It'd be a shame for Phil Foden if he was the one to be sacrificed because he's played well. Roger, back to Foden. Bruno just mixing it up on the right-hand side. Control of the game, allow themselves to develop the positions and the patterns, and then you've got a real problem. It's a great reach by Tyro Mings to get it away to stop it reaching Aguero. Fernandinho. It's about this point in the first half where City just started to dominate and control the game by these switches of play. Villa did when they scored. It's a more measured approach, but they're purpose built for that. Sterling. Making the low road again. Pass and move, pass and move. But Villa doing their own movement to get across of the potential avenues that lead to restoring the two-goal cushion. Through. However many passes there were in that move, there were plenty, and there wasn't a killer ball at the end of it. Yeah, but they're just working a position and probing, and it's Zinchenko, Zinchenko gets in. Well, they're pummeling Villa, but they're not knocking them out, that's for sure. So is De Bruyne. The game's settling down again into that pattern where Villa happens to do an awful lot of defending, the Villa fans behind the goal. Still in good voice. Oh, yeah. Target. Some of many who learned to trade at Southampton. And plenty of them have moved on to other clubs. A pondering pep. And the great philosopher. English is good. <laughs> he just stands his ground, sees him coming. Experience of Ahmed Al Mohammedi. Cute. Yeah. And to free kick. And they have that many chances to load players forward to try and get an equaliser here and send those fans behind the goal into raptures. by Grealish, it's too long for Mings. So disappointing. And Jack Grealish, most Villa fans, anticipating something happening from behind the goal. Just wanted a good delivery. Well, that's more hope than expectation, but hope is certainly still there. Especially if City encourage a high press but they're doing that so they can find a way find gaps to get forward and maybe kill the game off kill Aston Villa off Not like that Nakamba Douglas Luiz El Mohamedi Elmo they call him in the dressing room he's trying to light the fire here target on the inside but uh, Douglas Luiz who 
likes to shoot from distance, isn't going to get a chance to do that, and now it's four breaking for Manchester City. I don't think the game's been... It's better for Aston Villa to be like this. They're out of shape to defend, but it means they've got more people attack when it breaks down, and there is a risk with it. But just sitting back there at the edge of your box and allowing City to play hundreds of passes. Literally, hundreds of passes. Yeah, torturous. Yeah. Just something... Here's Walker. And the Villa fans are responding to it. was sold out within hours. There's nothing on general sale that went to all those who were entitled to their level of support. Well, there's just a better atmosphere in this final than the FA Cup final, just through the extra tickets that both teams get. And here's Foden. Well, he can't really get it in exactly as he wanted it, but he's been retrieved by Aguero. So strong. Stocky frame. As I say, they're not really equipped to come powering in like Alex Amata did to head a goal. Foden did his best. But they can hurt you in pretty much every other way. People forget Edin Dzeko scored the goal before Aguero's in 2012. It would have been no Aguero if there hadn't been Dzeko. He's... Uh, Figure of the past for Manchester City now. Guerrero still out there and he scored today. Will it be enough for Manchester City for their hat trick in the Carabao Cup? De Bruyne. Sterling's on the move and Mings reads it, clears it. Well, that's the risk, but at the other end, when they clear it, they've got 2v2 almost, and Jack Real is going to just get an outpaced by John Stones. He's got bodies up the pitch. Walker, Rodri, and Hamadi had uh, never let that. That's the yellow card. I think he's about to be taken off, actually. Yeah, once Getting he Trezago ready. Once he got in, it wasn't it wasn't a good one. Not at all. He got in to try and nibble at David Silva, but then he popped it off well before the challenge came in. Getting ready as well. These are attacking moves. Harahan is an expert at set pieces. Republic of Ireland international midfield player. And Trezeguet, the lively winger. Of course, got the goal that sent Villa into this final. The expense of Leicester City. Grealish. Chamber. By Gilbert, met by Fernandinho. And the Villa subs ready. Looks that way. Mo Salah is the king of Egypt in football terms. Trezeguet is the prince, I think. He goes off, having created the one Villa goal. Being replaced by 40, Conor Harahan. Yeah, well, he's gone into midfield. Grealish has gone out to that wider position on the left where El Ghazi was. And here he is, getting the ball further up the pitch and doing his thing. Target. Cross and Hunter have gone to the near post that time as he had to do really, he was the only one really attacking it in the box. Trezeguet had to come in at the back post, he had to come in from that wide right position into a more aggressive central position. Fernandinho just about kept 
kept his calm and just about kept the ball. They're trying to engage a bit more than yeah. Aston Villa further up the pitch. Yeah, I think there's something about it. Dean Smith seeing his team being a lot more brave in the second half. Makes the game a little more mad from a coaching point of view. A loss of control, but maybe a goal. Look where they are, you've got five, six players now pressing up the pitch and then you win it back. When I say control, it's a yeah. defensive shape of control. They control the ball for very long, but they're still very much in it with 20 minutes to go and the potential of extra time, of course. Trezeguet, just giving uh, City a bit more to think about at the back. Where will get there first. Oh. about City maybe losing a player, of course it'll be catastrophe for Villa if they lost one. Well, it's just whether he leaves the ground with both feet in the air, maybe he doesn't, it's just, you don't see too many challenges like that nowadays and when you see one it does shock you a little bit, just the force of it, the stud showing, better look here now, no he's okay, it's not as bad as I first thought, and certainly the City players thought because they reacted to it. Yeah. It wasn't marvellous, I'm afraid, the tackle, but it, it wasn't absolutely reckless. No, no, there was a... don't know if you thought the same, Marty. It looked like he jumped with both feet extended, stood showing really dangerously. And also the uh, rolling through the air of Aguero as well yeah. made you think. I mean, I'm not saying he did it deliberately because he could well have been hurt, but... and he is hurt, he's wincing a bit. But that sort of impact <laughs> these days makes referees reach for a different pocket but it's still 11 against 11 a corner. there wasn't much else on for Gilbert to do player who actually came hadn't signed before the playoff he committed himself to the club even though they might have been in the championship if they they beat Derby County here last May. And a flavour of success at Wembley. City have a corner. Remember, they scored from the corner in the first half. But John Stones is going up and Buckle. Milan coming in behind Stones. Rodri might have been there again. And it's Rodri again. Mm. This time he's up against them Engels who obviously swap markers it from the first half where Gilbert had him. But I think if he'd have offered Aston Villa to be within one goal with 15, 20 minutes to go, then he said yes, we'll take that. In the game. Even though City are still attacking and pushing. Not deep enough from De Bruyne. Hasn't actually fitted slickly into uh, City side yet. This is arrival as a substitute. Well, I can't imagine that that will go on for much longer. You know, the thing about Villa is because of the way in which they've changed how high up the pitch they're pressing, the City haven't got the same control in the game that they had previously, and that's important. Look at those Villa players now, they're out of the shape to press. And the back four are pushing up the pitch. His infield joined the left back by the right back, Kyle Walker. And the cricket pitch length to park. It's a clever ball from Walker to Sterling. And again with the Bruyne, you expect better, but it wasn't the easiest of balls to hit with his weaker foot. He's going to have one silver for another, I believe. Well, I questioned. Who would come off? Because I thought that Mares or Bernardo Silva would come out onto this right hand side where Phil Foden's playing. Will it be Foden? Will it be David Silva? Sons with a header. It was a good one. A comeback. Try 
Kovacic. And De Bruyne. Cup final will be dust, done and dusted by the 75th minute mark. Certainly not the case. Well, I was one of them 35 minutes into the first half. Rodri. Smoldering possession, so it is David Silva off. Manchester City substitute. Silva on. Time we see him at Wembley. Well, I believe they booked their hotel for the FA Cup final. <laughs> they certainly booked the hotel for today at the start of the season because Villa wanted to go there themselves and they found out that uh, Manchester City had it all buttoned up. I always remember in Euro 96 that the Germans booked their hotel for the final, I think, sometime. They, they always do that. <laughs> I don't know, they always do that. It's not arrogance, it's no, planning. No, no, it's planning. That also sends a message to the players. Yeah. We expect you to still be in the competition. It actually looks like Bernardo Silva's going central, or stayed central. And Foden stays out here on this right-hand side. Because he played through the middle. Mostly on Wednesday. Yeah. And, and Old Trafford. And they scored three in the first half against... Uh, Manchester United in the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg. They did lose the second leg, but not by a sufficient margin not to make this final, obviously. Well, 2 1 it was at half time, it's still 2 1 with probably 15 minutes of added time to go. This final by poor defending at a corner that shouldn't have been awarded. Yeah. De Bruyne just slipped away. There's any angle to the cutback really. Uh, Bernardo Silva started all the other games in this competition. In by De Bruyne and the goalkeeper got away with it. It was a little bit awkward, it bounced in front of him. Fearing the worst, and he looked up again, and there it was. Well, whatever happens, Mr. Villa will have drawn some strength from this game for the battles that they clearly got. Dean Smith saying, well, every league game's a cup final. Shouldn't be uh, too out of kilter playing an actual cup final. Well, we should have real confidence Aston Villa going into this last ten minutes because they'll be part of them thinking. You think about the six-nil that Watford experienced, and partway through that first half, it did feel like the game was going that way. The six-one that they experienced yeah. themselves. Yeah. And actually, the only time back in the 1930s they played each other on a neutral ground. They lost six as well. Yeah, so there'll be some good feeling out there from the Villa fans who are responding behind that goal and the Villa players that they're in this game. Still there to play for. Should give them confidence. Not that City will panic. John Stones would have surely said to himself, we've got to keep a clean sheet in the second half. And if we do, we win the cup. And here's Fogg. Not one of his better passes. And he's played plenty of good ones. And back by Walker. And they're trying to snap in. Look how far up the pitch Tyrone Mings was. A bit of a panic at the back. And Engels doesn't know where the help is. It's Sahara who's trying to get in. And here goes De Bruyne and Sterling. But Mings is there when they needed him. Breathing space in these last ten minutes. And he 
takes a whack, Sergio Aguero. He sees it coming from a long way away, and Target, I think, just flies into him. With a wild blocking challenge. Target <laughs> with us, only one T. <laughs> Although he'll be smacking the ground, he's disappointed with himself or because he's hurt Sergio Aguero. It's a real power burst, wasn't it, for Bernardo Silva? Thank you for your magnificent support. They just hurt a bit more when you get over 30. <laughs> or so left. And Villa, one goal away, really ruffling the famous feathers of Manchester City. Aston Villa somehow, the defenders pumping balls forward like that, got to somehow let the midfield players get up to support behind so they can pick up the second ball. Sterling. Bernardo Silva's in behind again, he find the right cut back this time, he's looking for Aguero. Villa somehow smother it away. Because he's so left-footed, he wasn't going to try and poke it in at the near post with his right foot. No, they're on the ropes, Villa. Can they survive? Can they get a chance? Well, they need to do more than survive, don't they? They've got to find a way, even if it's sending Neeland up for a late corner or something like that, like Rainer did unsuccessfully at Southampton in their last league game. Short corner from Manchester City, plenty of those today. Walker lines it up, Kyle Walker with a blast. Foden with a cross. And gets another corner conceded by Target. The limping Sergio Aguero. Manchester City substitution. Sergio Aguero. He's been told by the Villa players he's got to go off by the shortest route. That is a bit of an escort <laughs> from Gilbert. Well, you see there, and he's just below his knee. That right knee. He's taken a whack, Sergio Aguero. I saw one. He's supposed to go across the line, Sir Jones. <laughs> He's finally got there. Being replaced by nine It's called bending and walk. <laughs> uh, well, at the moment, Gabriel Jesus, that late winner at Leicester, scored a title goal in Madrid. Milan needs a couple of goals at it again. Yeah, he's getting a bit of good fortune, the goalkeeper. He's got to wait for his players to get out of the pitch. If he's going to kick it long, he's going to, he's going to roll it out. Cementos barely had a touch in the game, apart from scoring a very spectacular goal. They're just hoping that they can carve out one more chance for him. Now Keenan Davis is on for Samata. Well, he had as many touches already as some of the time. Davis has come from uh, non league football at the start to be uh, involved here. He nicked it back then. Sterling. Jesus in the middle, Zinchenko's up there as well. Cross comes target to get it away. City are doing really well, they're just picking up the ball that's getting cleared out and resuming their attack. Bernardo Silva, Sterling. This is trademark move really from the left onto the right foot. Brought up very close to Wembley Stadium. You can probably hear the roar if he scored at his 
family home. Five minutes and counting. Five minutes and fighting still, Aston Villa. Mings. That's an interesting one from Foden. Sinchenko turned it into something positive. Little bears across. And uh, Sinchenko did very well for Manchester City. to put it in the net and the referee hadn't blown to see whether VAR ruled in favour of Gabriel Jesus. Harry Leonard had the flag raised quite early. Well, those who will be thinking, how do we somehow get two or three moments, free kicks, corners in this last few minutes in this cup final? You see there John Terry standing on the instruction to put somebody higher at the pitch. Grealish gone central gone from five at the back in the last few weeks to five up front in this last five minutes yeah six up front and four at the back yeah. there is Davis Trezeguet score of that famous goal in the semi-final and they have a corner and Neil is wondering whether he should go up a little bit early for that. Well, these are the moments, though, that those two wanted. Take your time, compose yourself. Have they got someone like John Terry who could have the ball in both penalty areas so effectively? Tyrone Mings might be the man. Oh, the post! How close is that? Bravo reaching for it. Bravo goes for it again. So, so, so close for Aston Villa. Did he save it? He, he did. did save it, yeah. Got two good hands on it, went through his hands onto the post. A little bit of good fortune for Manchester City. So, uh, Bjorn Angles with the header. Is that a chance? Look at them. You don't get any closer to that without equalising. Bravo in name and in response to keep the frown on Dean Smith's brow professionally aching personally heartbreaking uh, got the uh, five fingers there from Pep Guardiola maybe suggesting there's five added minutes which the is, uh, in his tracks by the referee's whistle. And he just felt as that corner developed, that it was the moment that those Aston Villa fans behind the goal have been waiting for, the players have been waiting for. Can they try and get one more somehow? And Bjorn Engels, who was the culprit in that defeat at home to Tottenham, which was such a desperate moment for him and his club, right at the end of that game, nearly became a Villa legend right at the end of this one. Three. Bernardo Silva keeping pace with him. De Bruyne is in there as well. It's Bernardo and it's saved by Milan. Well, from looking like a formality of a final, it's become full of thrills and spills and a great credit. The goalkeepers have played their part. Milan's made some very good saves. It well, Bernardo Silva. But he gets across. The city is so close. And how, how we will remember two corners here, Gary. The one that's seemingly won the cup for Manchester City, and the one where Bravo kept out a potential equaliser. Same end. Davis. Five minutes. No. Too much. He had to play the extra pass. 
City are away. The Bruyne is away. They run into a tackle, not a foul. Gilbert heads it infield. Douglas Luiz trying to get there. Stones with a most unmatched to City clearance, but it might actually turn out to be a pass. Gabriel Jesus. City usually really composed in these last few minutes. Fantastic at keeping the ball and running the clock down. Pep Guardiola a lot more with that control. He won't want end to end. Fernandinho, I think the most composed of them all. And well, he's been for me the best player on the pitch, Fernandinho. Pitch, Grealish trying to get it up the pitch. Now they can knock it long now. City trying to defend high. There's Fernandinho again. It's been like Vincent Company at the back, Fernandinho. And, uh, it's a bit of frustration. that Villa can't afford to do, and that's stop the clock. Keep the ball in play, it's their only chance. This helps City. Not that they need much help. for a while that they were going to be outplayed for long chunks of the game and looked as though they were out on their feet at 2-0 but the goal just before half-time has changed the complexion and it's given us a rattling good second half yeah, and City will try and stay up the pitch here but everything's going forward, it's a very high line got to win this first header they have Engels does, gets another chance and plays a pass to Trezeguet. How run, it's a corner. Now, Nealon looks at the bench. Can I go? Can I go? He's gone. Well, Pepe Reina did it in the last league game at Southampton and they ended up conceding, but it won't. The needs are so much greater here. With silverware on the line. his way back. Lee Mason counting down the seconds. Still a minute to go. It's a good cross through the ball. Headed out by Stones, but up to Harahan again. And really try and pick someone out here. You can see the corner, and this is Manchester City twice just booting it out of play. And we'll get one more chance, Aston Villa, I think. It's whether they can get it into the box with any quality. Target's being asked to put it on the money here. Ming's going for it. And Dino there again, and again. And it's five against two, six against two in the closing seconds here. City might not need another goal, and they're not going to get one like that. It has gone right to the wire, Gary. Well, it's been good. It was a danger in the first half of this game. It will be taken away from Aston Villa through City being so dominant, but that will in the end. Hat 
hat-trick in the Carabao Cup for Manchester City. In the end, the favourites have flourished once again in the major final, but Aston well Villa really played their part. For Pep Guardiola and Manchester City, nine Wembley wins Aston in a row. Sergio Aguero on target two. early. And then Rodri with a goal. Well, it will be shrouded in controversy because it was from a corner that shouldn't have been awarded. And John Stones made that slip, allowed Villa back into the match. There's the fine header from Ali Samata. Devastating for Jack Grealish. And although painful for Sergio Aguero, although Dean Smith will put a brave face on it, devastating for him and his family and his friends up in the West Midlands. They're homespun in many ways, Aston Villa. And they were the underdogs here, but they gave the big dogs a real fight for the prize that was on offer. Well, Gary, you were wondering about 35 minutes into the game whether we'd be so excited at the end of it. Yeah, I thought the game was going to be taken away from Villa. City just absolutely dominant. The game only going one way. But that game, a goal for half-time, changed the flow of the game. City deserved it overall. They were the better team. We expected that, and they could have scored many goals. But his men can be proud playing against one of the great sides. And they'll be disappointed tonight but they kept it going to the end. Well, let's get some uh, reaction straight away down on the pitch. Rodri at 2-0, did you think you'd done the hard work? No, of course, never, never the match is in. You know, they're very tough game teams because they're very tall, they're strong, and we knew we, we didn't have to give up, so we considered that goal that makes we suffer a little bit the uh, last minute, but uh, happy for the team because it's, it's, it's been tough uh, being here and, and we love it. So. Sergio, do you still get the same buzz when you score a goal in the cup final, especially at Wembley? Yeah, but uh, always I say the. The goal uh, for me is important when, uh, when the team is winning. So I'm so happy for the, for the goal, but I'm, I'm happy because uh, we're winning the, the cup. Rodri, you sort of dominated the first half and then they got that goal. Did you, you find it tough after that? Do you think they changed or you changed? No, I just I think we they score because of our mistake uh, and we get 2 1 in the half time. So it's going to be tight again. Uh, at the end, as I tell you, we suffered a little bit, but I think we, we have enough chances to, to score more goals. But we're happy for the team, uh, for, the, for this season. It's not easy for us. And it's the second title for us, so we're very happy for us. So, Joe, you, you came off with an injury. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. Just, uh, just kicking my knee, but I'm fine. A third successive win for Manchester City. Only one team have done this in history. What does that say about the club? Ah, I, just I want to say... Uh, for the club, thank because uh, when I came here, I shows my hair is uh, win the title. So now I'm so happy because more, one title more. But I'm so happy because the clue is uh, is, is progress, good progress. No? Thank you both. Well, first of all, you have to say great credit to Aston Villa. Not many thought that going into the injury time of today's game that they would still have a chance of getting it to extra time. But he's done it again, Pep Guardiola, hasn't he? Surprised many with his team selection, but he always gets it right in the final. 13th final, or 13th win from 14 attempts in a major final. Claudio Bravo, one of those players who are playing in cup competitions. I'm sure he respects Pep Guardiola for that, but it is another win for City in the Carabao Cup, a third consecutive year, a fifth time in just seven years and is it part of yet another treble five of the last six league cup winners have gone on to win another trophy later that season michael how nervy did you get when engels hit the post i was very nervous to be honest um, fair play to villa 
that they played really well in the, in the second half. Give City too much um, space in the first half. But yeah, it, it was tense during the end of the game. It was nice for the lads to, to see it out. Obviously, I mentioned John Stones before the game. Um, I'm glad to see him get some minutes in as well. And Foden played really well today. So, good performances from City all round and another trophy. Jamie, no goals from City in the second half, but it was a class performance, wasn't it? That it was. His header was the only shot on target. Yeah, absolutely. Typified, half. I think, by Fernandinho. I thought he was, he's an incredible player. When they signed him in 2005 from Shatter to the Nets, we didn't quite know what we were getting, but he's been not just a brilliant defensive midfield player, he's such an accomplished defender as well. And I'm, I'm actually pleased for John Stones because he fell out, you know, he made a mistake for the first goal. I thought he defended well towards the end of the game. And from Aston Villa's point of view, Tom, I think your boys will take a lot of heart from that. Yeah, that's right. I think, obviously, initially, of course, a disappointment. Um, you know, the Engels header, we defended really well second half. You get that one chance and you look to take it, but I think there will be a lot of pride there today, I'm sure. You can see on the screen, the manager will be saying that's the application he wants for the rest of the season. Um, and they've given it a good go, and I'm, uh, I'm really, really pleased and really proud of them today. Some were frightened it might be a 4-5 or even 6-0, Tom. In terms of taking this forward for Villa, how important was today's performance if not getting the results? Yeah, that's right. I think in the next few days, when the emotion dies down, obviously, of not coming away with the win, um, I think there'll be a lot of positives to take from it. Um, you know, at 2-0, it, it was looking like City were going to take over. Uh, you know, they got back into the game with a goal and shown a lot of character. I thought the second half performance, they really were a bit brave. They got higher up the pitch, they went and pressed higher up the pitch, got on the front foot. And it just looked, it looked more contained, it looked more controlled. Um, and, and I thought we were going to get that one chance to get back in. Uh, City did get the win. Let's hear from Phil Foden right now with Laura. Phil, first of all, a huge congratulations. This must have been a massive day for you. Just tell us, first of all, when did you find out you'd be starting this game? Um, the day before in training, um, you know, the manager worked on a bit of tactics and I knew I started. And yeah, I just couldn't wait to play. You know, what an unbelievable day. Has it lived up to expectations? Is that again? Has it lived up to expectations? Yeah, definitely. Um, but I have to say, fair play to Aston Villa, you know, they kept going to the end. And um, the game was a really good game, so fair play to them. For you, um, personal performance, uh, an assist, and you came close to yourself as well. How proud are you with how you played? No, I'm very proud. Um, you know, every minute I get, I try and do my best. And, yeah, I'm very proud of my performance today. I'm just happy to help the team. You've had to be patient, haven't you, under Pep Guardiola? And he's limited the amount of games you play, but now trusted you today. Do you feel like you've repaid that faith? Yeah, definitely. But, um, you know, you look at players like Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, so it's not going to be easy to get in the team. Um, and when I do, I just have to make the most of it. And, yeah, I'm just happy to play in this team and I'm really enjoying it. And pushing forward, what can you hope to expect for the rest of this season? Um, what I showed today, you know, just hard work and dedication. And, yeah, trying to do my best every day and that's all I can hope. Phil, congratulations. You're a League Cup winner again. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Jamie, what did you make of him today, playing out of position, you have to say? Difficult, because when you're playing in a wide area, I think it suits him, obviously, in coming inside on his left foot, but normally you'd see him in a midfield three, and that's where he'd rather play. But he did some really nice bits. He had a great, his first impact in the game, when he took it past two or three players, played a good part, and he really grew into the game, obviously heavily involved in the goal with Aguero. I think he'll be, he should be very proud of his performance today. I think what, has, what I like about Foden is he's a City fan as well. You know, so it means that much more to him as well. You think the way he talks in his interviews, there's so much emotion going through there. Um, it's hard to get into this team, but slowly he's, he's finding his way. He's had Bernardo Silva, Silva in front of him, De Bruyne, top players. But now I think he needs to show his consistency when he plays and for next season, hopefully he can go down that spot. What do you feel it will do for him going forward? Oh, I think it's so important for him because that confidence, you see that they obviously really like him as a player. Deep down, he want to play central. There's no two ways about it. But for now, Captain and myself, most players, you have to sort of just find your way in the team and just hope once you get in it, in the end, you play where you want to play. But he's a super talent. You know, he travels with the ball extremely well. He sees a pass. And if you're asking you know, to be involved in the game, to make a goal, play in a final, winner's medal, that's what it's all about. It's all about those great experiences. And he's just going to go from strength to strength from that. It is incredible, isn't it? A third successive year winning the Carabao Cup five times in seven years, just sum that up. Yeah, it's just brilliant. I think so many people have questioned pet tactics. Said it earlier.
competition. The Carabao Cup 2020 goes again to